So a question that you could ask an expert on the Olympics for the 2012 Olympics. It's the beginning of the autumn term and these students at Little Ilford School in Newham are among the first in the country to embark on an entirely new 14 to 19 qualification, the diploma. The reason for the diplomas is rooted in uh, raising the participation age in education and training uh, to 18. If we're going to do that, we've got to make sure that we're engaging all young people in their education. What diplomas will offer is a style of teaching and learning which brings out your academic best by relating your learning to the real world of work. People have described it as the biggest qualification reform going on anywhere in the world at the moment. Five diplomas are being introduced in 2008, but by 2013, 17 will be on offer. This is something that matters to every school and college. You can't duck this if you're in the maintained sector, because every one of your pupils has got to have an entitlement to these from 2013. So we've asked Francis Stickley, Chair of Governors at King's Langley School, to come to Little Ilford, which is one of a small number of schools offering the diplomas in the first year. At King's Langley we already have a wide range of in, uh, examinations. We have GCSEs, BTECs, GMBQs, A-levels and myself and the governors are very concerned about stretching our resources further to offer another set of examinations. Oh hi, you must be Francis, I'm Simon. Hello Simon, Pleased nice to meet, to meet you. you. Right, shall we wander down this way? I think it's probably the best place to start. Simon Mayers is the Chair of Governors at Little Ilford School. How long have governors been thinking about diplomas here? I suppose the first time the full governing body realised the full impact of it was something like March 2006 when I thought it was a good idea to have, get the 14 to 19 coordinator for the borough to come and talk to the whole governing body to explain what's happening, why it's happening and what it was going to mean for us. Clearly there was a lot of planning involved. How did you approach this? The school decided the best thing to do was to to get one of the members of the senior learning team to take responsibility um, and so we had one person who was the focal point that's Tracy Jones our deputy head mm -hmm. she comes to our curriculum committee meetings so we were being told right from the beginning what was happening and how it was evolving. Tracy has been developing the borough-wide partnerships which underpin this new model of teaching and learning. There have been regular meetings with the Newham 14 to 19 partnership group it's involved a lot of time to meet with um, other schools, other providers. I guess over the last two years, it, it works out about an average of four to five hours a week. What about the teaching? Is that shared between schools? No diploma can be taught by one school on their own, mm -hmm. so it's very much uh, about collaboration. Mm -hmm. For example, the creative and media diploma that we are part of the delivery mm -hmm. of is also shared with three other schools and the um, Newham Sixth Form College. That must be a timetabling nightmare. How have you managed that? We had to think very, very carefully about two years ago about how we were going to timetable it because obviously it involves common timetabling across the borough. All students need to be on their diploma courses for a day and a half a week, so all schools have had to coordinate their, their timetables to ensure that students can be released on those days and a half. So a layout colours, style, it's got to be appropriate for the group that you're going after. The Creative and Media Diploma covers a wide variety of subjects which reflect the skills required in the media industry. So 15 seconds just from At Little Ilford School, Suresh Ravendran is teaching a unit based on graphic design, photo imaging, film and advertising. So what's the plan for this term? Well, we've got an exciting scheme of work um, revolving around the Olympics in 2012. Um, because the Olympics are just around the corner, I mean, it's being set in Newham, and we're working with Newham students. So we were looking at how, how to raise awareness amongst the teenagers and young adults. So students have come up with some exciting ideas about creating leaflets and pamphlets and websites. And from that, they're going to create a guide for a particular target audience. To What's the introduction of diplomas meant for you? It meant working in partnership with four other schools, with colleges, with local employers. And I admit myself that I'm a quite an insular teacher and I don't get the chance to work with people from outside. So this allowed me to make many new contacts and ideas um, which I would have never conceived of myself in a classroom. What's the difference between a creative and media diploma and a media GCSE? Uh, the employee engagement is paramount. I mean, it's, uh, I think in the specifications they mentioned 50%. But for us, it's about the employers giving the real life experiences. But the students themselves need to go out there to link together the learning that they do in the classroom with the outside experience. Well, these are qualifications where the starting point was employers, where we said to big household names, people like Rolls-Royce, Vodafone, BT, you know, what qualifications, what learning do you need? Design the qualification with us. The Press Association is one of the employers closely involved with the Creative and Media Diploma in Newham. 
What we try to do is work very closely with uh, Suresh and his team at Little Ilford to have some direct employer input into the scheme of work and the way in which the individual module is actually going to be delivered. Because of that, we've set up a press conference with the uh, people in behind the Olympics project and the students are going to have a chance to actually do a press conference for real. And then they'll use the story ideas and the content that they get from the interviews to actually put their projects together within our training centre here in the PA newsroom. The students will be actually coming to the newsroom on three consecutive Thursdays and they'll also get a chance to have a go at putting some TV content together for some of the website news bulletins that, that we do. So they'll have a chance to experience what it's like to be a real journalist. That's all for now. We think that it's a really important thing for business to be involved in education and to help to bridge that gap between school and college and work. Has it been difficult to get employers on board? Schools haven't been organising the links with employers on their own. We've got a very uh, successful team at Newham's EBP, uh, Education Business Partnership, right. and they've been part of the 14 to 19 group from the beginning, and they are the key people to liaise with employers on employer engagement. We've heard about the workplace learning opportunities in creative and media. What about the other diplomas, construction, engineering? The employers have been involved in writing some of the, the, the units of work mm -hmm. and the students will be visiting different sites um, for engineering, for construction to see what it's really like on site mm -hmm. and actually meeting all the different people in their different roles to get an understanding of that. And at times employers will be coming into the classroom based activities to share their experiences, their ideas. Is the ticketing manager important for the Olympics? Yeah. Why? The diplomas are designed to bridge the gap between school and the world of work, but are they targeted at a particular group of students? Uh, diplomas are aimed at all abilities. That's why we've got level one, level two and level three uh, diplomas. It's a very broad qualification at the different levels, which will cater to all abilities, but it's the new style of teaching and learning that I'm excited about because that will bring out the academic best in people, whatever their ability. So what students have you offered the chance to do a diploma? Initially we offered it to all Year 9 students about this time last year. We've actually ended up with a complete range of abilities on the diplomas which I'm very proud of. We've got a number Considering of that the qualification is a completely new one, Tracy and her colleagues are very pleased with the take-up. At the moment we've got 39 students out of 270 um, studying diplomas. That sounds like the parents and students have got a lot of confidence in the diploma as a, a, a good offering for the future. We were very honest with our, our parents, we gave them the information they wanted, that they needed and we talked about issues that have been in the press about whether or not this is going to be a recognised qualification. At the end of the day we convinced parents that you know, we've got their children's best interests at heart and we wouldn't be putting them on a course that we didn't have full confidence in. I chose to do a diploma because um, it gives lots of opportunities in different types of subjects like drama, music and media and it gives a lot of first-hand experience and how to do something in a working environment instead of just a classroom environment. I chose to do the diploma because I thought I'll learn new skills, meet new people and just have fun. Working with employers um, pretty much pushed me to get into this even more because you're learning with like professionals even instead of just like other students that only know as much as you do. The borough-wide diploma delivery model means that students travel to different schools and colleges for their classes. In the creative and media class today, there are students from six different schools. Clearly it's a departure for you to have your children visiting other schools. Were the governors concerned about that? Actually, it wasn't a, a, a complete departure for us because we've been involved in a scheme a couple of years ago where some of our pupils went down to the sixth form college to do a BTEC in business studies. When that was brought in, there were a lot of concerns. We were concerned, first of all, with the pupils' safety. Um, who would be responsible for them? How would they get there? All that pastoral care. So we had quite a couple of quite robust meetings where we were challenging SLT on what the procedures were going to be, what they put in place, how they were going to put in place. So how, for instance, do you keep track of students at other schools? We've got good relations with the other schools. We've also got protocols in place. There is a system right the way across the borough. But most importantly, we have electronic registration. OK, what I'm doing now is I've gone on to the web-based attendance system that we're using across Newham because we've got students in over, I think, 12 different venues for their learning. People that are delivering at other schools and other venues across the borough tick whether the child is present or not. 
when I log on I can access it for all our students and I can see if they've actually turned up there today. I think the fact that students are going to other schools and being educated in different venues is very positive. When they leave us at the end of year 11, that's what they're going to have to do when they go to college or to work or to other sixth forms in other schools. So it's not an issue for the students at all. In fact, it's, I think it's a real positive step for them towards independence. Going to other schools is okay because it helps like broaden your horizons. It's a bit nerve-wracking coming to a different school because you don't really know anyone here and um, you miss your friends and uh, during playtime or lunch, but you get along with the people. Coming to a different school is quite interesting. There's new new people, new faces, people you never saw, and you just make friends. Francis is particularly keen to find out about the burning issue of funding for the diplomas. Right, money. Well, it always does come down to this, doesn't it? Um, I actually raised this last term at our Governor's Forum because I was concerned about whether we got enough money. What we were told was there is a government grant that is going to um, recognise the fact that these diplomas are more expensive to provide. The question is, does that provide all the money all the way through? We think not yet, and certainly at the borough level, they're looking now to see if they can plug the funding gap by um, utilising other grants that are available for this age group. A lot of schools ask me whether or not there is extra money involved in them uh, delivering diplomas and it's quite right that they should ask it because they, they're going to be doing um, something new and forming new partnerships and uh, training staff up for, for new qualifications. Now uh, what we've said uh, at the moment is that there is an extra premium for their diploma students, I think of a thousand pounds per pupil. Now as more and more of them do diplomas then they will achieve the, the economies of scale which will mean that 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 sort of level of funding won't be necessary. I know it's the early days, but how's it going with the diplomas? Um, really positive start. I mean, yeah. this is Simon's doing some now. informal monitoring. It's all gone off really successfully. I've had lots of positive feedback from the schools. Yeah. Great attendance. They've all found their way there. Right, good. They're behaving themselves really well, and they've really stepped up to the challenge of wearing smart, casual clothes, because right. that was one thing we weren't too sure about. Yeah. So what advice about introducing diplomas can Francis take away with her? Well, I think the first thing would be to say is that diplomas aren't optional. We've got to do them. I think the whole thing is for the school and the governors and the senior le leadership team to get involved. You need to get the parents involved. You need to talk to the parents about what they are um, and make it clear to them. This is uh, an academic qualification. It's not something for the, the bottom stream. It can engage kids at all levels of ability. It's about the planning, it's about the strategic planning. Mm -hmm. um, there are now lots of boroughs that have set up diplomas and it's about liaising with them. And it's the things like the travel, the attendance, the care and support and guidance for students in schools. It's about planning that ahead. For the children, it's an exciting opportunity to follow a course that meets their needs, their aspirations, their interests, and opens up much wider pathways for them in the future. So what has Francis learned at Little Ilford School today? What I'm going to take back to my governing body is reassurance that we can deliver this very different model for 14 to 19 qualification alongside our existing qualifications and the key to it will be good preparation. Mm -hmm.